Gobi Manchurian just might be the best appetizer of all time. It's an Indo-Chinese dish that features crispy, crunchy cauliflower in the most delicious, sweet, spicy, tangy sauce. Today I'm going to show you how to make a restaurant quality version at home and later we'll visit the toughest food critics I know to see if it meets their expectations. So this is pretty good, uh, but it is little. Okay, we're gonna get started on our sauce for the Gobi Manchurian. I've got like five garlic cloves, an inch piece of ginger, two serrano peppers, cause we like it spicy. And I'm just gonna chop these not too finely because they're gonna get cooked over pretty high heat. I don't want them to burn. A lot of Indian dishes start off this way with ginger, garlic, and green chilies. But as you will see, this is not your standard Indian dish. This is more of a fusion dish. So for the green chilies, I've got two serrano peppers. For most palates, I'd say take out the membranes. That's where all the heat lives, but we like it spicy here, so we are keeping them in. We're also gonna dice up a large shallot and a little bit of a green bell pepper, maybe a half cup. All right, normally I hate these things, green bell peppers, but the flavors in this dish are so good that it really works well. And these don't need to be diced up because you kind of want them to be individual distinct pieces. They're part of the dish. They're not just an aromatic. All right, so all of these ingredients here are pretty commonly used in Indian cooking. But as I mentioned, Gobi Manchurian is an Indo-Chinese dish, fusion of Indian and Chinese flavors and ingredients, which is why I also have some scallions. Indo-Chinese cuisine is actually a couple hundred years old. Back when India was a British colony, a lot of Chinese immigrants came over to find jobs in India. Many of them opened Chinese restaurants. And as you know, Indian people love their spices. So a lot of these Chinese chefs and cooks started to adapt their cuisine to be a little more friendly to the Indian palate. So these days, there's not really that many Chinese immigrants left in India, but Indo-Chinese cuisine is still hugely, hugely popular. And it features a lot of Indian vegetables and aromatics and sometimes spices, but with Chinese cooking oils, vinegars, sauces, cornstarch. It's often very saucy, very spicy, tangy, bold, umami, lots of good stuff. There's a lot of stir fries and fried foods that are made in a wok, which is obviously traditionally used in Chinese cooking. So I'm just chopping up the whites and the light greens of the scallions, and then we're gonna save these green parts for the garnish at the end. And I like to just trim off the first inch or so of the scallions. They're usually a little bruised and just not very good. And when you're making something like a stir fry, you wanna make sure that you do all your mise en place, all your prep ahead of time, put everything in their respective bowls because you're gonna be cooking over high heat and it goes very quickly so you don't have time to like chop something here and there. You wanna have everything prepped, which is what we're doing. We're gonna start on the liquid ingredients in the sauce. I'm gonna grab my apron because it's a little messy. First up, we've got soy sauce. A lot of Indo-Chinese dishes use soy sauce. It adds this nice savory umami backbone to the dish. And we need two tablespoons. For additional spiciness, we also have some chili sauce. This is sambal ulek. You could also use chili garlic sauce. If you are baby math, however, you can omit the serrano peppers from earlier and just use the chili sauce. Also got some toasted sesame oil, which is gonna add this nice subtle nuttiness, very common in Chinese food, and it works really well here. But just a teaspoon, because it is a pretty strong, potent ingredient and some white vinegar. That's gonna add a little bit of tanginess. Just distilled white vinegar is totally fine. And we need a tablespoon of that. So far, we've got savoriness, a little heat, a little tanginess. So now we need some sweetness to balance everything out. And that is typically how Manchurian sauce tastes. A little bit of saltiness, a little bit of sweetness, a little bit of tanginess, a little bit of spiciness. And so for sweetness, I've got some brown sugar. We need two tablespoons of that. You could probably also use coconut sugar if you want. And some ketchup. I don't cook with ketchup very often, but I've tried this recipe with both tomato paste and tomato sauce instead, and it was just missing that sweet tang that is so good in Manchurian sauce. So good old Heinz, it is. And we need three tablespoons. Oh, so funny when it squirts out. We need three tablespoons of this. And we'll just give everything a whisk and set this aside for now. All set. Now for our cauliflower. This is the gobi, Hindi word for cauliflower. We need a small cauliflower and we're just gonna cut it into florets. So I'm gonna take my paring knife, run it around the base, get rid of these leaves. Just run your knife around the base of the core and eventually it'll loosen up. Just pop it off like this. You wanna cut your florets into like a small, maybe medium size because this is a sharing dish don't want to have to like grab a huge cauliflower piece, but also these have more surface area relative to their size. So that means they're going to get crispier and crunchier when you fry them. 
The typical way to make Gobi Manchurian is to batter the cauliflower, which is what we're gonna do now. We're gonna make our batter, and the base of it is all-purpose flour and cornstarch, which is another ingredient from Chinese cooking. I'm just measuring everything on my scale because I don't wanna get measuring cups dirty. Again, you can find the measurements for this recipe in both metric and regular cups and tablespoons and things like that on the blog, it's linked down below. And if you are gluten-free, you can use rice flour instead of all-purpose flour. It works almost the same, so check out the blog post for instructions on how to do that. And now we need some cornstarch. And the cornstarch really makes the batter and the end result super crunchy and crispy. It works really great in this recipe. To add a little extra flavor into our batter, I'm gonna grate a teaspoon of ginger and garlic directly into here. Well, first I'm gonna measure them and then I'll put them in there. You could prep this ginger and garlic when you were doing the ginger and garlic for the sauce or now, it's up to you. But you do wanna grate them or finely mince them because they're gonna go in the batter and you don't want any large chunks. We're also gonna add a little bit of red Indian chili powder to this. We're also gonna add some salt. Obviously, we want our cauliflower to be flavorful and well-seasoned. Just give this a whisk. Incorporate all the ginger and salt and garlic. And the red chili powder is gonna give it a really nice, beautiful, light orange color. Now we just need to add some water to our batter. You wanna add it gradually because if you add it all at once, it'll start to clump but also you might add too much and then the batter will be loose. It'll start to slip off the floor. It's, and you want it to instead be thick and kind of gloopy. It should feel almost heavy. We're gonna start adding the florets to the batter just a few at a time and use a silicone spatula. Just really get in there, make sure all the crevices, all the nooks and crannies get up in all the cauliflower, make sure it's well coated and then just add a few more florets and keep going. I'm gonna set the cauliflower aside for now and we'll make our stir fry sauce that we prepped earlier. You're gonna heat a wok over medium high heat until it just starts to smoke. Then you'll add your oil in and swirl it around the pan. This technique prevents anything from sticking to the wok. And you'll add your ginger, garlic, and chili peppers. Just a minute, shake the pan back and forth pretty frequently so nothing burns. And then you'll add in your shallots, the scallion white and light green parts, and the green bell pepper. Season that with a pinch of salt and keep shaking the pan or stirring frequently and cook for another two to three minutes. Now pour in the sauce and let that sizzle for a minute. To help thicken this up just a bit, we're gonna add a cornstarch slurry, just a half tablespoon of cornstarch mixed with a tablespoon of water. Once the sauce thickens up a bit, you'll take it off the heat and let it come to room temperature. We have arrived at the biggest decision point in this dish. Do you bake the cauliflower in the oven or do you deep fry it? I think you'll love both versions, but my personal opinion, the fried version, which is the traditional way to make it, hands down the winner. It is the superstar appetizer that your guests will go crazy for. It's unbelievably crispy and crunchy and it's just so freaking good. And I know deep frying, not the healthiest thing, but it is a party dish, something you're sharing with friends, not something that you're gonna eat an entire pan of for your Tuesday night dinner. For me personally, balanced diet definitely makes room for deep frying occasionally, especially when it's this good. I'm gonna show you how to make it both ways and then I'll serve both versions to my parents and see what they think. Okay, so for the baked version, you're gonna use the battered cauliflower florets like we made earlier, and then you'll dip them into panko breadcrumbs for a little extra crunch. You're gonna spread these out on two parchment paper lined baking sheets. If you have a convection setting on your oven, go ahead and use that. And they need 35 to 30 minutes until they're crispy and brown. And then you'll just toss them with the Manchurian sauce. For the traditional fried version, we'll heat up enough oil in a saucepan for deep frying. You wanna wait until the oil is between 335 to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. And you'll add a few florets at a time into the hot oil using a spider or a slotted spoon like this. And you're gonna fry the cauliflower in two batches so that you don't overcrowd the pan and so that the florets cook evenly. Let the cauliflower hang out for a minute or two before stirring so that the batter doesn't slip off. And then you can start to stir them and pull the florets apart because they're definitely gonna stick to one another. In six to 10 minutes, the florets will be nicely golden brown and you're just gonna lift them up and down to get rid of some of that excess oil before putting them on a paper towel lined plate again, to blot out that excess oil. And then you'll repeat the same thing with the second batch of cauliflower. Just wait until the oil comes back to temperature. In my dozen plus tests of this recipe, I found that the key to truly amazing restaurant quality Gobi Manchurian, the kind that stays crispy and crunchy, is to do an initial deep fry, which is what we just did, and then a very quick flash fry, flash fry. <laughs> and then a flash fry right afterwards, and that helps it stay crispy and crunchy, which is what Gobi Manchurian is all about. 
So for the flash fry, the oil needs to be hotter, 375 to 400 degrees Fahrenheit. So increase the heat to high, that's gonna help it cook super quickly. And you can add all of the cauliflower, both batches at once, and they need just one minute until they're deeply golden brown. And then you'll transfer those to a new lining of paper towels and sprinkle with a pinch of salt. Okay, final step, we're gonna add the fried cauliflower to our Manchurian sauce. Honestly, I'm so excited, it smells so good. The reason I cook the cauliflower at the end and the sauce before is because I find that if you add the cauliflower florets to the hot sauce, it kind of steams the cauliflower and then you don't get as crispy and crunchy of a texture, so I like the sauce to be room temperature. Do you hear that crunch? Final step before I get to dig in. Some of those scallion greens from earlier. Nice little color and just a little bit of chopped cilantro, not too much. Oh, it's so good, I'm so excited. Oh. I'm gonna head over to my parents in a few minutes. We're gonna have them taste this version and the baked version, see which one they prefer, get their tasting notes, but for now. Holy shit, that's good. After arriving at my parents' house, I made a fresh batch of both the fried and baked Gobi Manchurian, and we were ready for the taste test. Well, nearly ready. Okay, welcome to our taste test. Most of you already know my parents. You've met them before in past videos, but in case you haven't, this is my dad, Deepak. Say hi. Hi, Nisha. <laughs> no, say hi to the camera. No. Dad, what, what's, what's on your hat? What kind of hat is this? Well, this hat, uh, we, we had gone to Machu Picchu. I got it from Machu Picchu, Peru. You look like a park ranger. Yes, I would love to be a park ranger <laughs> in my retired time. <laughs> and this is my mom, Mila. Hello, guys. Okay, so I've made you Gobi Manchurian today. We're gonna try two different versions. So what do you think a good Gobi Manchurian should taste like? Crispy and tasty. Yes, basically crispy and tasty. Okay, I think we are ready to try version one. Mm. It's, it's good. It's good. very tasty. So this is pretty good, um, but it is a little dry. Is it too spicy for most people at home? Yes, probably. <laughs> well, I use two serrano peppers, so for most people at home, don't use two. Use one or take out the membranes. All right, are we ready for round number two? Sure, I'm very yes. hungry. You're very hungry? Okay. Mm. So this is very crispy, but soft. It's crispy and, you know, like, not hard. This is good because this, I think, is fried. I can make out. It's very good, very <laughs> so tasty and I didn't even realize it. I'm so hungry. So I'm going to take the one more piece. This is a giant. <laughs> I like this better than the other one. This is more moist. I think this is fried stuff. You like the fried version? Oh, yes. It does make a difference. Yes. More crunch? but it's still like not hard to chew. Can I take one more? Of course. Okay, you say you take one more, you took four more. <laughs> yeah, sorry, do that's you, so, Indian style. So do you think that it, it's worth the deep frying to get this result? Yeah, I know most of the people don't like deep fry stuff nowadays because of health reasons, but certain foods, they taste better when it's no. deep fried, I know. This is good once in a while, not every time. When people are around, I'm very happy with this. <laughs> When can we eat? <laughs> we are starving. All right, I think that's it for now. Well, you guys heard it from my parents. Both versions are good, but if you want a super excellent, really crispy, but moist, super flavorful version, deep fried version wins. But if you want something like on a regular basis, your Tuesday night dinner, the baked version is still very tasty. Okay, thanks for joining us, guys. Thank you, my girl. Okay, bye everyone. Bye-bye.